जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नितानंद Example of this is Prahlada Maharaj. When he was offered 
And then he is by Lord Nisimha Dev, Prabhupada Maharaj said, Nai Godi Che Paraturatya Vaitaranyas Vaddiriya Bhayana Mahamrita Magna Chita So Che Tato Vimukha Che Tasta Indriyartha Maya Sukhaya Bharam Up Vahato Vimungham My dear Lord, I have no problem and want no benediction from you because I am quite satisfied to chant your holy name. This is sufficient for me because <clears throat> whenever I chant, I immediately merge in an ocean of transcendental bliss. And only lament, I only lament to see others bereft of your love. They are rotting in material activities for, trans, uh, for transient material pleasure and spoiling their lives, toiling, all day and night simply for the sense gratification with no attachment for love of body. I am simply lamenting for them, devising various plans to deliver them from the clutches of Maya. Sila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains in his Anubhashya, a person who, is, who, has attracted, uh, who has attracted the attention of the spiritual master by his sincere service likes to dance and chant uh, with similarly developed uh, Krishna conscious devotees. The spiritual master authorizes such a devotee to deliver fallen souls in all parts of the world. Those who are not advanced <coughs> prefer to chant the Hare Krishna mantra in a solitary place like Vrindavan. Such activities constitute, uh, in language of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, a type of cheating process, in the sense that they imitate the activities of exalted personalities like Haridas Thakur. One should not attempt to imitate such exalted devotees, rather, everyone should endeavor to preach the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in all parts of the world and thus become successful in spiritual life. One who is not very expert in preaching may chant in a secluded place, avoiding bad association. But for one who is actually advanced preaching and meeting people who are not engaged in devotional service and not, uh, are not disadvantageous, a devotee gives the, devo the non-devotees his association but is not affected by their misbehavior. Thus, by the activities of a pure devotee, even those who are bereft of love of God get a chance to become devotees of the Lord one day. In this connection, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur advises one that one discusses the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam beginning with Naitat Samachare Jatu Manasati. Hmm. This is verse from the 10th canto, 33rd chapter, verse 133. And the following verse in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Anasaktasya Vishayan Yadhaktam Upayan Jitaha Irbanda Krishna Sambhandiri Yurtam Vairajan Vishayan. One should not imitate the activities of great personalities, one should be detached from material enjoyment and should accept everything in connection with this Christian service. And then verse number 93. Eta vale eka sloka shikai la more bhagavate sara e vale 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 Saying this, my spiritual master taught me a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the essence of all Bhagavatam's instructions. Therefore, he recited this verse again and again. <clears throat> this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 11 to 40, was spoken by Sri Narada Muni to Vasudeva to teach him about Bhagavata Dharma. Vasudeva had already achieved the result of Bhagavata Dharma because Lord Krishna appeared in his house as his son. Yet another to teach others, he desired to hear from Srinarada Muni to be enlightened in the process of Bhagavata Dharma. This is the humbleness of a great devotee. And then the verse from Srinarada Muni itself. 
एवं ब्रदस्वपिय नाम कीर्त्या असत्यथोरुदिरोदिभय When a person is actually advanced and takes pleasure in chanting the holy name of the Lord, who is very dear to him, he is agitated and loudly chants the holy name. He also loves Christ, becomes agitated and chants just like a madman, not caring for outsiders. Namaste Saraswati Dele Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Vanchakau Padarudyasha Vipasindu Melevasha Patitana Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Arvaita Vadadhar Sri Vasadi Bhora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Ajahn Vandit Kujok Nakavadat Sankirtana Ikatitaro Kamalayatakshu Vishwambaro Vichavaro Yugadhar Mahalo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Krishna-e-Krishna-Shaitanya-Nam-Nilaur-Dishe-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-Namaha-
watching TV. <laughs> That's their main spiritual activity. <laughs> spiritual practice. So there's not much difference. Uh, at least nowadays, before the world was that not good, nowadays, not much. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when the time goes on, the more time goes on, the more message of love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu becomes more relevant and more relevant for the people of this world. Because otherwise, as Srila Prabhupada in this poor court, beautiful court to the verse where he says that uh, we should preach Krishna consciousness, otherwise people are just rotting. And it's not that they are rotting themselves, they're just trying to make others grow <laughs> by distributing all kinds of degraded, not distributing, propagating, propagating all kinds of very degraded ways of spending their lives. Uh, and as a result of it, the natural result of it, they become more and more dissatisfied in the heart. And the hatred in the heart, the satisfaction in the heart, turns into hate, into anger. And then as a result of it, there is a war. We are witnessing now this completely mad uh, event which is going on. <laughs> that, you know, people of Russia and Ukraine are fighting war with each other. If you would say this, you know, a few years back or even a few days back, people would say, you must be crazy. But no, this is the natural result of, of the hatred which is within the heart of people. And this hatred, sooner or later, has to come out. And how it comes out? It comes out as, as the killing of somebody who is near and dear. Killing their relatives, killing the I mean, that's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. But that's the natural result. And Prabhupada says here that actually, who is guilty, who is responsible for this war? We. <laughs> Because we didn't preach Krishna consciousness enough. Because we didn't really follow the mood of uh, one of the Mahajans, Akhlar Maharaj. Uh, we didn't follow the mood of Srila Prabhupada, who actually teaches us what we should do. And as a result of it, we see the degradation which is taking place. And this degradation is not, I mean, it's it's horrible what's going on in the world. It's horrible. Uh, and uh, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, as I said, his message, message of love, becomes more and more relevant because he's not only teaching the essence of love, he, he teaches us how to spend our life, what we should do, what we're supposed to do, how not to waste our life. And we're still, even being followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how much time we waste on all these useless activities instead of developing love of God, which is so rare. How much time we spend on the internet, on reading different news and gossiping and doing some politics and striving for power and prestige. How much mental energy is being wasted on this? Uh, and, you know, it would be okay if we would, would achieve the goal of life, if, if we would be, you know, crying and, and roaring just by hearing the holy name of the Lord. But because we didn't achieve it, probably we have some better, better goal in life <laughs> than to do all these strange activities. We really have to understand by reading these verses, uh, you know, how, uh, how much we have to do, to put it in a positive way. How much, you know, what, what we should do, what should be the essence of our uh, life and our activities, emphasis of what we are doing. Because 
unless we achieve this elevated stage which is described uh, in the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, we don't understand Srimad Bhagavatam. We may be studying in Mahavidyalaya, Maha Mahavidyalaya, <laughs> Maha Mahavidyalaya, Vidyalaya, whatever it is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the sign that we understand the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam is not that we know, you know, five verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Whatever, or we repeat it as in a parrot like, or we give, you know, bombastic lectures, you know, Hare Krishna. <laughs> but the essence is this we chant the holy name and all of a sudden we start crying, or we start laughing at this, laughing at ourselves. <laughs> uh, that's the essence, we start dancing without actually caring for what others are doing. This is according to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is the essence, and he came to teach this essence to all of us. That's his message. He came to give us this message. Because before he came, uh, Vaishnava Sinavadvi, who was one of the centers of learning, uh, were very, you know, it, it was a disgrace to the whole Navadvi. All Navadvi considered the very fact that Vaishnavas are there as a disgrace. You know, culture people of Navadvi, they would just, you know, they, they would see Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas were like untouchable for them. You know, they didn't even want to approach them, close part. They were uh, really angry at Srivastan and very interestingly, in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavatam, Vrindavan Das Thakur, while explaining the attitude of the people of Navadvi uh, towards uh, the Vaishnavas who were living uh, in Navadvi at that time, uh, he's uh, saying one verse. He said that uh, while talking between each other, with each other, all these proud, uh, learned people in Navadvi could say, I was studying Srimad Bhagavatam for so long. And I've never seen that in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said that you should dance and cry and chant the holy name. <laughs> this is amazing, you know, there are so many verses in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti Siddhanta says, but in the first profile, by uh, commenting on this verse, he says, this is the fools that Reading Srimad Bhagavatam, they don't see the very essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. Everywhere, practically, in every page of Srimad Bhagavatam, starting with the third verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Ibata Bhagavatam Rasamalaya. From, from the, the third verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, I think it's said that this is the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam is Rasa. And you should faint. <laughs> this is what this is how you should read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sukadeva Goswami explains the method of reading Srimad Bhagavatam. You read Srimad Bhagavatam and then, you know, after reading one verse you should faint and then, you know, get back to senses after some time and read another verse and wait again. <laughs> because this is Rasa Malaya. This is, you know, this is, you should, you should read till you faint. You know, of course, it will take a long time to read <laughs> Maybe if we read during God for Nino when we fast. <laughs> this, this bona fide result of reading Shiva Bhagavatam will come to us. But Vrindavan uh, <clears throat> Dastakur, he explains that this is, uh, this is how people were degraded. How people were, how the consciousness of people is perverted, and you know, unfortunately, the fact that uh, you are reading and studying Srimad Bhagavatam doesn't mean much, <coughs> unless you are really following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because the key secret of understanding Srimad Bhagavatam is not. Mechanical reading of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's no studying Srimad Bhagavatam, but 
really try to follow the model of the, uh, the moon of CJ Dynamics. That's a very essential uh, key to success. Otherwise, you know, Simon Bagdaton will become yet another academic discipline which we learn. And we may have PhD in Simon Bagdaton. Or this degree or that degree, this Bhakti Vedanta degree or <laughs> Bhakti Vaibhava degree, whatever it is. Uh, but all these degrees, there's just another Upadhi. Upadhi actually means diploma. <laughs> Bhakti Shastri is a Padi. <laughs> Bhakti Vai Bhav is a Rupadi. <laughs> and Bhakti means Sarva Padi Vinay Putra. <laughs> you should just throw away all your Upadis, <laughs> all your diplomas. <laughs> so that's, that's the essence of our Srimad Bhagavatam. So she said, I'm a Prabhupada came and uh, while speaking to my Vadi Sanyasis in Benares, he's explaining all these things. He's explaining <clears throat> what happened to him while he was um, receiving Panti, when he received the initiation from uh, Ishwarapuri Park in Bayo, and how Ishwarapuri Park told him that don't study this Vedanta. It's a waste of time. If you study this Vedanta, you become, you know, heavy in your head. And that's the only result. <laughs> you will just develop headache. <laughs> While uh, discussing this, you know, sutra or that sutra, yes, you may spend your whole life while discussing this. Other people in other sampradayas, for them, Vedanta Sutra is the main book and uh, they really study it very carefully. But uh, it's for a fully concept, not based on Just chant Hare Krishna. You are not really capable of understanding Vedanta Sutra. Don't even pretend that you are capable. Just be honest. You know, uh, maybe Jan Madhya said, uh, maybe. At most, what you can understand <laughs> that this is this is the or maybe Shastra Mulata, but even this is very hard. Uh, so don't pretend. Just chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. But not only chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> of course, in case of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, as soon as he started chanting Hare Krishna, as he himself explains, uh, he immediately developed this Anuraga, Jata Anuraga. The goal of chanting Hare Krishna is to achieve Anuraga, is to achieve attachment to the Lord. In case of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was very easy. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself actually predicted it. While he was displaying his pastimes of Pandit in Navadri, uh, while wandering in the streets of Navadri, he would tease, especially Vaishnavas, he would love to tease them. And actually he predicted, you know, now you are running away from me. And all the, Nav all the Navadri Vaishnavas, when they would see me, they would run away, far away from him, because they knew that he would engage them in some useless argument or whatever. And uh, while they were running, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would, would cry from far. He would say, you know, now you're running from me. There will be time when you will run towards me. <laughs> there will be time. The time will come when you will just follow me. <laughs> Please remember this tradition. And he said to Mukunda, one of those Vaishnavas, uh, well, Mukunda was tactfully, or maybe not so tactfully, avoiding speaking to his team. He said to Mukunda, hey Mukunda, now you're running from me, but the only time when uh, I will become such a Vaishnava, then Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma will come to my door. 
and will therefore say bhakti. This will be the time. And uh, of course, when uh, this time came, this time came and he was in Jason and Gaya and from uh, Ishwara Puri part, and he started chanting the holy name, and immediately the holy name manifested its, uh, its full power in Sri Chaitanya <clears throat> But here it is said in this particular verse that uh, in normal cases, in exceptional cases like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, uh, uh, the effect of the chanting of the holy name is uh, immediate and sudden. But in normal cases, it is said here, evamrata. Evamrata means following this prata, following this practice, following this sadhana. What is the sadhana which you should follow? Uh, Svapriya nama kirtya. It means that you chant the holy name, but not the any holy name. Svapriya nama. The nama which is, which is dear to you. The particular name of God uh, which contains, uh, and basically means Svapriya nama kirtya, you know, for us, it, I mean, it doesn't matter which name we chant. We don't have any particular attachment to any name. <laughs> because uh, name for us doesn't mean much. Svapriya nama kirtya implies, this phrase from uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam implies that while changing, you remembering the pastimes connected with this particular name. And you are particularly attached to these pastimes. And therefore, you develop the attachment, this Jatanuraga, uh, to this particular name. You are not just chanting the name mechanically, you know. For us, it doesn't matter which name, you know. Because anyway, Hare Krishna, okay, not talking Hare Krishna. <laughs> it, it actually means, why do we chant Hare Krishna? Because Hare Krishna is supposed to be our Svapriya Nama. The Nama which is particularly dear to us. Because we are attached to the pastimes of Krishna in the 10th end of Srimad Bhagavatam. And because we know these pastimes. Because otherwise, how you develop Anuradha to all these pastimes? How you will get to this level of Jata Anuradha? So, uh, this is the practice. The practice is not only chant the holy name, but the chant the holy name or glorify the holy name in Kirtan, which is particularly dear to you. Why? Because if you know the pastimes which is contained, which are contained in this name. The pastimes which are in this name and which should be revealed in this name. Uh, and Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur by Kaneka commenting on this verse, Evam Bratak Svapriya Nama Kirti Jatam Raga Drutta Chita Uchari Drutta Chita Well, uh, because of this anuraga, because of this attachment to the holy name, you will feel that your heart uh, will become liquid. You will feel the, this amazing process of the melting of the I'm sure that everyone has this, you know, some little experience, at this little experience of this Rupta Chita, when the heart becomes melted. You know, you, all of a sudden, because your heart becomes melted, you love everything. You know, yes. A minute ago, you, you were envious of everyone. You, you didn't actually show it externally, but <laughs> you were not happy with everyone. You know, why he's here and he's not just like this. And he thinks he's a pure devotee, he's a pretender. And, you know. But all of a sudden, by chanting the holy name, you look at the people, goodness, they all pure devotees. I am an envious demon. This is, this is what it means, Ruta Chita. This is what it means that your heart becomes melted because when, uh, when the predominant uh, bhava in the heart, I want to enjoy. And I want to enjoy better than everyone. And everyone should worship me because this is the way how I 
should enjoy it. How else I can enjoy it? Everyone should understand my glory. You know, if this is the power, that means that the heart is still frame. It means that the heart is like iron or like stone. But, you know, when the heart becomes soft, as it is supposed to be, then you love everyone, and then, because the heart becomes soft, you start crying. And it is said, uh, what, what is going on uh, here, that is uh, Uchai, very loudly you start chanting, and uh, loudly Uchai Hasati, such a person, he, he starts laughing very loudly, and then, Atho, Athaha, and uh, then after that, Rodity, he starts crying, and Rodity, he starts, uh, he starts yelling uh, in a very pitiful tone, and Gayati, he starts uh, singing, and then Unmadavan, he is completely mad, Nritati, he starts uh, dancing, uh, about that without uh, paying any, atten uh, any attention to the reaction of other people. So Vishnana Chakravarti by commenting on this verse, he explains what's happening, uh, what is the nature of this Anuravya. He says that while chanting the holy name, all of a sudden you see the beautiful scene when Krishna, little tiny boy Krishna, with his curly hairs and big lotus eyes and uh, very red like bingo fruit leaves, smiling and, you know, looking around in a very fierce, fearful way. And he's really afraid. And it's dark. It's becoming little, little, some light is coming. It's early morning. He's skillfully, you know, um, goes into some body's house. And he's looking around. Something sees me, and sees me. He's really afraid. And you see this scene. You're chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And you're not thinking what will be today for breakfast. <laughs> or how I will enjoy after that, or what will happen when I achieve this or that, or whatever. You know, you're thinking, you see the scene how Krishna is trying to steal some water. And then all of a sudden, Krishna hears a loud voice of the body who caught him red handed. Hey, this is a thief! And Krishna becomes very afraid. And when you see this, you start laughing. You're chanting Hare Krishna and you just love and love and love. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare And all of a sudden this sin disappears from your vision. And when this sin disappears from your vision, you start crying. Krishna, <laughs> and, uh, and you start, you know, very loudly saying, Krishna, why are you doing this to me? Who do you think you are? You are just here. Why did you disappear? You know, what right do you have disappear from my way? <laughs> and, uh, and therefore he loudly says this, and uh, uh, when Krishna appears again to him, he says, you know, I thought I, I, you don't need me. And Krishna again comes to him, and he starts singing. And, uh, and seeing Krishna, he starts dancing. So it's not an artificial thing, it's just a real experience which the devotee has. Why he has this experience? Because he's attached. Why he's attached? Because he studies Shiman Bhagavatam with this purpose of being attached to the Holy Name. These two processes are most important sadhana and therefore this verse starts with this Evam Prataha. This is the sadhana. Sadhana of reading Shiman Bhagavatam. Uh, as a companion or companion to the chanting of the Holy Name. Chanting the Holy Name, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, and then again chanting the Holy Name, and then again reading Srimad Bhagavatam. When you are tired of reading Srimad Bhagavatam, chant the Holy Name, and you are tired of chanting the Holy Name, read Srimad Bhagavatam. Don't do anything else. <laughs> 
This is what it means, Sevam Prataha. This is the Vrata which is to follow, uh, as supposed to follow, of course. You know, there's no YouTube in, in the middle. <laughs> YouTube suddenly is not implied here. <laughs> so, uh, so, but uh, anyway, so you see, Daniel Mahaprabhu came here and he came uh, to reveal this essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. Because again, before Srimad Bhagavatam people, these people, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu people, study Srimad Bhagavatam. Madhvacharya, the only one uh, out of, you know, four original Acharyas, Nadi <coughs> Gurus, so, uh, four Vaishnava Sampradayas, he wrote commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam Tathvaya. Very short, essential commentary, but you know, in the, and in Madhva Sampradaya, Srimad Bhagavatam is very highly revealed. There are few commentaries written by the followers of Madhva Acharya, more or less. In uh, uh, Sri Sampradaya, there is a uh, commentary uh, written by Mira Raghava Acharya, uh, and, uh, uh, which is also very very sensual commentary. But again, you know, uh, let's let's examine very impartially uh, whether we should, whether we have the right to say that before Shima, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and outside of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's parampara, nobody can understand Shima Bhagavan. Is it not a sectarian claim? Is it not a very, you know, exaggerated claim? Which uh, members of some, you know, Bengali sect of Vaishnavas, uh, you know, put forward to, to prove their superiority. <laughs> so let's, let's try to examine this very carefully uh, because uh, it's essential for us to understand that even though there are beautiful commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam written by very elevated Vaishnavas, but still there is something very special in the way how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained and <clears throat> therefore uh, for us to understand Srimad Bhagavatam really, as Svarudha Madarga Swami himself says in uh, Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya, the only way uh, to understand uh, the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam is to find the devotee who is completely absorbed in the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and to hear him. And then only uh, we will be able to swim in this Siddhanta Samudra Karanga. <laughs> then only we will be able to swim in this ocean of uh, the, on the waves of this Siddhanta Samudra of Srimad Bhagavatam, of this ocean of different philosophical conclusions. You know, only then uh, if, if we hear from such a person, not from anyone else, you know, we respect and we may study the mentors of other acharyas, they have, you know, beautiful uh, realizations about different verses and meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, you know, and, but of, we try to follow as much as possible. Sri Rasvani and uh, then uh, other uh, commentators who uh, from Gaudiya Sampadaya like Vishwanathya Pravati Taku and Vamsidhar uh, and Jiva Goswami of course in his, in his beautiful numerous writings in Satsangarvas and Nagoya in Nagara Sanatana Goswami means when it comes to the dance kingdom. So we try to do this. Why? Uh, so let's 
examine. I do not do it for a long time, but I wanted to make a few points in this regard. Uh, why it is so important for us to follow sheep and animal travel, and what is the specialty, what is the research of his uh, explanation, of his exposition of the philosophy of Shema Bhagavatam. <laughs> Actually, Prabhadananda Saraswati about Prabhadananda Saraswati. In a few verses, who is, of course, very fanatical follower of Sri Chaitanya, <laughs> openly fanatical. <laughs> he, he is not afraid of, he's actually proud of being called a fanatic. <laughs> uh, so, he said a few very interesting things. I mean, he said many interesting things. He says very interesting things which, which are important for us to understand. He said, Araditam Navavanam Rajakananam Te. Naraditam Navavanam Rajayeva Dure. He says, if you uh, worship Araditam Navavanam Navadri with its nine forests. Uh, then only Prajakananam te, then only the Prajakananam, the forest of Praja, will become yours. Then only you have the access to this Prajakanam. You know, you cannot really enter to this forest of Praja without worshipping. In other words, you, you cannot enter to the forest of Praja without worshipping Shishetanam. Because Worshipping the nine islands of Navadvi means that you worship the personality of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his moon. It basically means that you understand, you know, how he uh, worships Krishna. Otherwise, there is no evidence to put it down. And then he says, Aravita Vijasuto Rajanagaraste. If you worship Vijasuta, if you worship this, uh, Brahman, uh, the son of a Brahman, religious. Then Prajanagara, then this Lampak, this, uh, you know, very, uh, how you say this in a gentle way? <laughs> this Prajanagara, this very promiscuous uh, hero of Praja, <laughs> very, uh, uh, you know, loving. Hero of Raja will become yours only then. And uh, Naradita, uh, we just look at, not a way of Krishna. You will never understand Krishna. You will never understand Krishna. Uh, if you are not uh, worshipping Vijay Sutta, if you are not worshipping Sikhi Dhanya. And then he said even more amazing things. He says, Navadvipi Vashedyas tu Hareta Sya Vrajas Kiti Marichika Vatan Yatra Dure Vrindavanam Dhruvam. He said, those who live in Navadvip, only they live in Vrindavan. <laughs> and those who don't live in Navadvip, for them, living in Vrindavan is like a mirage. <laughs> It's very far away. They may think that they're living in Vrindavan. In reality, they're not living in Vrindavan. It's a mirage. It's like a mriga, like this, uh, uh, you know, deer uh, who is running uh, behind mirage. He thinks that the water is here. And in a similar way, we may live in Vraj. But uh, if we think that we live in Vraj without worshipping Sri Chaitanya without worshipping Navadri and the rasas of Navadri. It's just a mirage. We are living in a, not in a real Vrindavan, we are living in a mirage of Vrindavan. That's, that's uh, the extent of his, his, his nishta of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Oh, what happened to this verse? Anyway. There is one more verse which uh, also from Navadvip Shakatam. Oh, what happened to this last one? 
last lines disappear. Anyway, it, it's a nice verse. Very important verse for us. Ari Mudha. The very address is clear. The room Prabhupada says what is appealing. Ari Mudha. Gudham Vichinute Harer Bhakti Padadim. Daviyasya Dristya Tia Par Parichita Purvam Muni Varai. He says, uh, O oh fool, uh, please uh, try to achieve this Bhakti Padarim, try to achieve the state of real Bhakti, not be satisfied with some shadow Bhakti, some, uh, some, you know, yeah, semblance of Bhakti. Uh, some bhakti abhas. Gudham, uh, <coughs> which is very secret. Vichinute, think about this. Harer, Harer Bhakti Padarim, um, Bhakti of Lord Hari. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, uh, and then he says, uh, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting way of thinking. He says, you're a fool, you please think about this bhakti and please try to achieve it. Uh, what is what this kind of bhakti you should try to achieve? Purvam muni varai vistya atyarchita. You should try to achieve this bhakti which the sages of the past couldn't achieve. Please, Muda, uh, try to achieve the bhakti which sages of the past couldn't achieve. Is it? Does it sound very logical? <laughs> logical proposal? You know, what is this perspective? <laughs> what chances do we have? You know, please try to achieve this bhakti which was even not uh, accessible to the, uh, to the sages of, of the ancient Vedic past. Uh, <coughs> uh, and then he says, Navishram Bhaschite Yadi, Yadi Cha Dor Balyami Vata. He says, Yadi, even, uh, not even, uh, if, uh, if you, Navishram Bhaschite, if you don't really have uh, Vishramba, the face, into this awful, or if you think that it's Dor Balyam, that it's very difficult to achieve. Does it sound familiar? You know. <laughs> oh fool, please try to achieve this amazing bhakti which was not achievable, or was not achieved by the sages of the past. Uh, yeah, or if, if, if you think that it's too difficult to achieve. And if you uh, think, if you don't really have faith, is it really possible? Is it possible? What to do the last line is it here, nobody knows, but uh, I, I remember what was there, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you would be left suspended. <laughs> so what to do, you just take shelter of Sichi Kanyama, <laughs> of boom. <laughs> and then very easily you will attain this stage of, uh, of prayer bhakti, which is not achievable otherwise. Uh, so again and again and again, uh, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati he stresses this point, and this is this is the way uh, and the only way to achieve. Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reveals reveals something which uh, was not revealed by anyone. And if we simply serve uh, to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then at a smart, very uh, suddenly, this. Uh, you know, if we if we serve Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if we are fortunate enough after accumulating a lot of pious credits, uh, the heaps 
the mountains of pious babies. I have a gore of a garden in the vendetta of the Indicator. The father has started it. Then, then they have chance. It's not guaranteed. But uh, if we serve very conscientiously, very sincerely to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Tata Tatsarpa Tidya Kasma, then how to them by this number of feet. Then they understand what it means to feel the love of Krishna, which Sri Mati Rukhani herself feels. Then we will have the access to this particular rasas. That half of them by the Sudhambas. We will be swimming in this ocean of these rasas which we have uh, accessible to, to the bodies of Pindavan. So this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. And how did he come to give this? There is another very important verse of uh, Sarvadananda Saraswati, extremely important. Again, uh, very relevant to the members of this Mahavidya life. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Kapur Prabhupada says, Srimad Bhagavata Sya Yatra Paramam Tatpariyam Uttankitam Sri Vayasakina Duran Vayataya Prasa Prasangi Piya. He says that why? What is the meaning? Uh, why it is necessary to have the involvement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Why without the involvement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's not possible for us to understand all these things, because uh, Prabhadananda Saraswati, the good Prabhupada, uh, explains that, uh, uh, that Sri Vayasaki, uh, Sri Sukadev Gaswami, uh, in his Rasa Prasangi, while describing the Rasa dance, Abhi, he only Paramam uh, Tatpariyam Uttantitam. Paramam Tatpariyam, the highest meaning of this Rasa Prasanga, of this Rasa Lila, he only gave Uttantitam. Uttantitam means the hymn. Uttankitam. Only little bit. He hinted what was going on there. Sukadev Gaswami himself didn't reveal it because it was very difficult. It's a very difficult subject matter. It's not easy to understand uh, and it's not easy to become qualified to understand. And therefore, he was not saying about this openly. He was giving hints for those who understand, but who can understand? So he himself, but what did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did? What did he do? What did he do when he came? Yatratha rasa keli nagara rasa svadaika sadbhajanam tadvastu kathanaya gaurava kushalo ke and therefore to reveal this because it was not revealed. The Hari himself, Lord Krishna himself, uh, he descended to this world, Tavatirna. Uh, for what, for which purpose located in this world? Gaurava Kushe. He took this Gaurava Kushe in this form of uh, Lord Gauranga. And Tadvastu. Uh, to reveal this vastu, to reveal this essence which was only hinted by, uh, by Sushadev Gaswami. And what is this essence? Arada Rati Keli Nagara Rasasvadaika Sarvajan. He explained what it means, how to perform this bhajan, which was not revealed before, and which is not revealed by anyone else. Only after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, those who follow Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they understand what is this sad bhajan? What is this real worship of, of Krishna? How we can worship of Krishna? Now, so many people worship Krishna. So many people. Everyone worships Krishna. You know, 
Donald Trump probably also wants to <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> but uh, from our point of view, so many people worship God. Well, one way or another, you know, they all say God. And God means who? Christian. They all have different ways of worshiping Christ. But here, Sri Prabhupada says what he says, very important thing. He says, uh, there is a real way of worshiping Christ. Sad <coughs> The real way of understanding who is Krishna, that how to worship Krishna, and only by worshiping Krishna in this way, he becomes pleased. If you worship in any other way, he will not be pleased. He will become pleased, but not to the, to the extent we want him to become pleased. And we want him to become pleased to the extent that he becomes our uh, obedient servant. That's the extent we want to achieve his pleasure. Which is not a small goal. <laughs> so Prabhadananda Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he says, very interestingly, what, what this sad bhajan means, Radha Raki Keli Nagara Rasasvadai to, <coughs> to have the taste for this, for this Radha uh, Raki Keli Nagara Rasa Asvadai Eka to only have taste for this to tune our mind and our heart in such a way that we can only have the exclusive taste of this uh, Radha uh, Raki Keli uh, uh, Rasa Nagara uh, Rasa Spadai that we have uh, this exclusive devotion to this uh, Radha, uh, Radha Raki Keli to this very intimate amorous pastimes which Krishna performs here in the Kunjus uh, of uh, Raja and this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to him. And he was the living embodiment of it. He didn't, he didn't theoretically uh, come to it. He showed to us what it means. His personality is the manifestation of this process of Srimad Bhagavatam. And while, why we can only understand Srimad Bhagavatam by worshipping uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because Worshipping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, means to try to get into the same mood as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Understand the powers which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself experiences. And uh, while reading Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we try to understand these powers or moods of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. While understanding the moods and uh, Sri uh, Krishna Daspira Raj Daswami very you know, generously explains this uh, in, uh, in Chaitanya Chirikandati. He says that uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Puri, he experienced love of God. But uh, when he started his journey to Vindavan, his powers uh, of love of God uh, within his heart intensified hundred times. So you should experience the love of God uh, very intensely. And then, you know, you should start your journey to Vrindavan. Real Vrindavan. <laughs> and then, by the very fact that you're going to the direction of Vrindavan, on the direction of these loving sentiments which are displayed here, uh, but the very fact that you are traversing this path, uh, your Baba should increase hundred times. So much so that you will go through the Jarikanda forest. And you will have to go through Jarikanda forest or New York forest or whatever forest is there. New York is much more dangerous than Jarikanda forest. Or to speak about Moscow. I don't say this. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going through this Jarikanda forest, and again, uh, Krishna Daspira Raj Daswami explains, you know, the, the, trying to explain to us the internal moods of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he is just, you know, 
seeing some rhinoceros and there, you know, he's going just just in the middle, the herd of rhinoceros and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going just through this herd of rhinoceros and Balabhadra Bhattacharya is... You know, and rhinoceros, you know, give the way to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Balabhadra Bhattacharya is wondering whether they give way to him or not. <laughs> or they, they will treat him separate, differently. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is emanating this love, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. And all these wild animals in the Jarikanda forest, they feel this. They feel this amazing experience which he experiences in his heart. And all the, you know, elephants are fainting and starting chanting Hare Krishna and all the tigers and, and uh, deers embracing each other. This is, this is, you know, this is only Jarikanda forest because uh, Krishna Das Kuraj Daswami said, Vankirish Mathura is moved in his hundred times. <laughs> you know, in Jarikanda forest his mood was enough to convert all the tigers into your wife's girls. <laughs> you know. What happened with him when he reached Mathura, it's even unimagined. And then when he took bath in Vishramgat in Mathura and uh, started towards the forest of Vrindavan, his mood increased even hundred times more. <laughs> and when he reached ultimately Radhakund, which was nearby, we cannot even imagine what he was feeling when he actually revealed uh, or discovered uh, Radhakunda, this most intimate place of pastimes in the world. And to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he reserved all other places to his uh, assistants, to his you know, Rupa Sanatana Goswami. They carried in so many places of pastimes. One place of pastimes he will be served. Only one. That is Radhakun. Why? Because this is the purpose of his appearance. So they were celebrating his appearance. What is the real purpose of his appearance? What is the real purpose of the appearance of Vishwambar uh, Mishra? A Brahmin and Navarri. The real purpose of uh, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to reveal the extent of uh, the love of Vrindavan, which was not revealed and remains secret to anyone who is not a follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and remains secret to most of the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as well. <laughs> because of the of not perfect way of following Sri Chaitanya so this is this is the purpose. This is what we're celebrating now. This is what we're celebrating. And if we are not experiencing even a little drop atom of what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, uh, you know, his his appearance is a waste. His appearance in this world is futile <laughs> if he uh, didn't give it to us. So if we want to really uh, celebrate his appearance, the celebration of his appearance means to understand the meaning and try to approach in a very humble way the holy name with the pastimes of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, especially uh, the dance canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and especially Rasalila Kasanda, which the inner meaning of which is reduced by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and explained by his followers what is going on, how the, the love of God, because what is the tenth scant of Srimad Bhagavatam, especially the initial uh, chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam? Again, only Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was able to reveal it. It's, the, it's a very intimate and hidden, indirect description of the growth of power in the heart uh, of Krishna devotee. 
from Purvara described in the uh, in the 22nd, 21st chapter of uh, the dance canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, or even before, which is described in in the connection with uh, with Kali Ramana Lila at the end of it, and uh, there is the hint of Purvara in the 15th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we should read. Or be able to read the transcript of Srimad Bhagavatam as the description of the development of this world and follow this uh, beautiful method, prakriya, which is described in how the attachment becomes more and more solidified, how Purva Raga turns into uh, Raga, and how this Raga becomes more and more uh, mature, unless. Uh, it uh, uh, reaches its culmination in uh, in uh, Radhakum, in the meeting of Radhakum. How through the series of meeting and separation uh, uh, of, uh, of this Samboga and, uh, and Vikalambo, yeah. Uh, through the series of these meetings, how this, uh, this uh, the, the power in the heart becomes more and more condensed. So that's what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. And uh, not only came to give, how what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed to us. That's uh, the essence of his personality and his his past tense. So this is what we are celebrating. And, uh, to celebrate in a real way uh, means to, to understand this. At least to try to understand it. It's not possible for us to understand it completely. And follow only by the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada who teaches us how to achieve this state, how to become real servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in our community achieve this state and in this way understand the real essence of Sri Mahaprabhu which is described in this verse Evan Pratas Papiyanam Kirti Nam Rabhu Deva Chita Bhucha Asatya Pura Diti Rauti Rayati Unmada Bhum Vritya Ti Opata Thank you very much so far, it's not. Any questions? Devotee can ask. Thank you very, very much, Maharaj. You have a t-shirt of asking me. I have two, three questions. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. As you mentioned about the four Sampradayas, so I heard Lord Chaitanya took two principles from each Sampradaya. And then from the Bhagavad Sampradaya, he took exclusive love of Gopis, Radharani, and from Vishnu Swami, exclusive love of Krishna. Other thing is, isn't it like usually contradictory? Exclusive love of. He took. The concept of pure devotional service from Sri Sankara, which is a broad uh, concept. Uh, he, he took from Sri Sankara this idea of the purity of devotional service unmixed with karma and yam. Whereas the specific moods uh, which, uh, which Sri Chaitanya Mataru propagated in his unique way. Uh, are described in uh, in uh, in Bhakti Sampradaya specifically in, in this Tasha Sloti or whatever uh, not in not in his commentary to Vedanta Sutra but in some other which some scholars say it's not in Bhakti but it doesn't matter for us 
is there in this Sampradaya, the moods of gopis of Vrindavan. Uh, and it's different. It uh, also belongs to the category of pure devotional service, but, or exclusive devotional service, but uh, the category of exclusive devotional service is uh, broader, like Mother Yasoda also has exclusive devotional service. Somebody uh, will say to her that your devotional service to Krishna is inclusive, she will be very offended. Uh, offended. <laughs> Definitely very exclusive. In any case, uh, the concept of exclusive is broader than the specific notes of Strong 
association with other devotees and uh, what about puts with you? Uh, one who is not very expert in preaching may chant in a secluded place, avoiding bad associations. But for one who is actually advanced preaching and meeting people who are not engaged in devotional service, are not disadvantages. A devotee gives the non devotees his association and is not affected by their misbehavior. So it's a very interesting, uh, you know, thing or point which Prabhupada does. He says that in the beginning we should avoid bad association and chant in uh, isolation unless we become very advanced. Actually, preaching. It's a very important activity, but one has to have a certain level of advancement to preach without being polluted by the desires of other people, because when we intimately associate with other people, their ambitions and their desires come to us without us even noticing this. So this kind of contamination is possible. Therefore, it should be, first of all, there should be should be certain, you know, we should practice the devotional service in a very pure way for some time. And then also there should be times during our uh, yearly activities when we exclusively uh, engage in bhajan. Uh, because otherwise we will just be uh, seduced or enamored by the secondary fruits of the preaching, which is, we all know what. <laughs> Money, you know, moderation, distinction, this and that. So that's easy. And, uh, and Krishna doesn't give us the love of God because he, he knows that we have some other purposes in our life. And He gives this other purposes. You want this? No problem. Take this. You want this profit, adoration, distinction, name, fame, glory, whatever it is? Thank you, no problem. So, when... It's actually very interesting. In this uh, second chapter of the 11th canto of Shema Bhagavatam, where uh, this verse is there, in the conversation of Narada Muni and Vasudev for Nava Yugendra, and, and uh, Nimi Maharaj, Mm. The second chapter is very important, the third chapter is also extremely important. And then the second chapter there is this uh, description of the three levels of the world, three levels of advancement. Starting with Sutta Madhikari, mm. <clears throat> where it is said, Sarva Buddhishu Yakpasyat Bhagavad Bhavan Atmana. Uh, there the uh, Uttama Bhakta is described. And uh, who is Uttama Bhakta there? Sarva Bhuteshu Yak Pasyat Bhagavad Bhavan Atman. The one who sees in all the living entities, Sarva Bhuteshu Yak Pasyat Bhagavad Bhavan. Uh, and this Bhagavad Bhavan can be translated differently. You know, you can, you know, the, the first understanding of the first meaning is that you see the world in every living entities. You don't see the living entities, you see the Lord is in the hearts of every living entities. Uh, and uh, you're not interacting with other people, you're interacting with the Lord in their hearts, you relate uh, with the Lord in their heart. And uh, and Pasiyat is, is Lothla Karma. Right? You have to see. It's an imperative move. Bhagavad Bhavan Yakpasyat So, uh, what does it mean? Does it mean that you have to really make yourself, uh, you know, force yourself to see the presence of the Lord in everyone's heart? And the Acharyas explain that this imperative mood which is there in, in Pasyat, in Pasyat, you should see means uh, the, the Uttamadikari doesn't mean that he always sees this. The Uttamadikari means he always wants to see the world. Uh, 
there is the desire to see. So, uh, when this desire to see uh, the Lord and everyone is there, then we can preach. Then we will not be able to, uh, then we will not be contaminated by the other desires of other people. If this desire is firmly established within our heart, I want to see the Lord. I want to see the Lord in the heart of every living entity. I don't want to, you know, to preach to, you know, this rich person or that rich person. This what party or that or party. <laughs> uh, I want to preach to, uh, to this person because I, I see his connection with the world. And, and so anyway, that's good. It's, it's painful, I, I understand what you mean. It's very painful to see this. But anyway, such days as Lord Purnima is a good days to remind ourselves that this is the real purpose of studying the real purpose of non participatory as well. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I would like to ask everyone to pay for the Lord in Bangladesh. Yesterday at night around 10, 10 p.m. Mobs of Muslims, they attacked us from Bangladesh to Dhaka. So, all of us, we uh, are celebrating our party over there in Bangladesh, there is another chaos situation, chaotic situation. So, let us all sincerely pray to those devotees there for their protection and for their well-being. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare.